can I just say, everyone, if you haven't already, please go to the APTA uh, website and send letters to your legislators about the med upcoming Medicare cuts and see what we can do to bypass them. So that's just my shout out for the Medicare stuff. Um, today, the presentation is building off a couple presentations ago. And in that presentation, we talked about the five secrets to um, successful PT owners ownership and leadership in their clinics. Uh, Will and I did a podcast, a subsequent follow-up podcast on it, <clears throat> shared our thoughts about those five steps. And today and last time I presented, we talked about that first step, and that is to track your statistics. The second one today we're going to talk about is how to increase production without treating patients. And, and we'll go over it starting from here. So there are five successful actions of PT owners. There could be more, but we, I focused on these. Uh, some of the tools that you need to be a successful owner that I didn't get into include establishing your purpose, values, and goals right off the bat, and making sure those are living and breathing and not just collecting dust on your shelves, right? So that, I just wanna say that as an understood going forward, it's a foundational piece. Um, every successful owner I know has purpose, values, and goals. They live those, they breathe those, they communicate those with the team, and, and they continue to uh, highlight those throughout their ownership leadership. Now the ingredients for success, last time we talked about statistics, this one time we're gonna talk about spending admin time working on your business. And we're gonna talk about some of the details. So when we talk about admin time, you know, we're, we're physical therapists. We weren't necessarily trained, but well, we weren't trained in physical therapy school to know what to do with our admin time. And when I say admin time or taking a half day, like I'm gonna suggest, uh, to work on your business, it doesn't mean catching up on notes, it doesn't mean paying bills, it means actually working on the business. And so we're gonna talk about what we do with admin time today. The other three steps that I've discussed and laid out and proposed include getting some business training, duplicating ourselves, and having a certain level of impatience or intolerance. Uh, for things that are keeping you from achieving your goals. So those are the five actions. And the one secret is that first step, which is to take the time to work on your business. So a couple of things to prepare um, for this presentation, but also what people, what owners need to do to prepare to be successful is have a, a mindset that number one, you're an owner first, you own a business, Sometimes we don't understand that. Sometimes we, we think, well, we're physical therapists. Well, no, you're a small business owner. First, you're a physical therapist. Second, right? You just happen to be a physical therapist that owns a business. Well, the business comes first because if you don't have that, you don't have the rest of it. Time, make sure you're controlling and setting a time, a time in your schedule. That is owner administrative time. So we need to be prepared, set that aside accordingly and be in control. We have a tendency as physical therapists to let the, the schedule control us, to let the patient's availabilities control our schedule. But remember, we are owners first. We need to control our schedules first and then let others work around that. The other preparation item, get organized. Know where you can find your data, where your reports are, how, know where your systems are in your EMR and how to work it. Um, simply get things in place, whether that's um, electronic files, data, reports, statistics, et cetera, but also get organized with contracts, policy and procedure manuals, and um, organizational charts of how your uh, business is structured, et cetera. And then lastly, make sure you're spending an appropriate, investing a certain amount of time in your business, not just working in your business. And that is put the energy into it for the business, not for the patients per se, but spend the time on the business, spend the money that you need on the business. We got physical therapy educations. We didn't get business educations. And now lo and behold, we are business owners. So it's necessary to spend a little bit of time. You, would, you might even call it tuition in a sense um, to get some business education and training. That can be in, in the shape of a coach, a consultant group. It could be books. It could be um, webinars, you name it, but spend the time spend the money. It's worth it. So 
the secret to increasing production, the first step, I believe, is to schedule the admin time. I'm gonna move some things around here. Schedule your admin time. This is the foundation for changing your business. And so I noticed in my business when I started really making some changes and going from the full-time physical therapist that's treating 40 hours a week and then trying to run my business on the weekends um, and at nights and sacrificing my family and my hobbies and friends and what kind of whatnot. I, I didn't really change any of my lifestyle to what I really wanted it to be until I decided to set aside time for my business and set aside this admin time. And it took me 12 years to get to that point where <laughs> someone finally recommended, dude, you need to set aside a half day a week at least and work on your business right? Four hours per week, and then gradually increasing over time. Um, it, you know, if you could, I would recommend two half days a week, uh, just to give you the space and the time that you need. If you can't start with four to five hours, one afternoon or one morning a week, and then go from there. The hard thing is, and what I really recognized, and those people who uh, have been through this tr transition, you have to have that big block of time because it's hard to move from technician. And what I mean by technician from physical therapist into the business mindset. It's like, for me, it wasn't, it, it's an energy, it's an energy drain to change that mindset from production, production, production mode, working on my patients, patients, patients to now sit down and working on the business. There's a, there's a, a transition that has to be made. And it's hard to do if you only give yourself a couple of hours or an hour here and there. You have to get out of the technician mindset, that, that technician brain and, and physical therapist brain and move over into the business and take on your business hat, owner hat. And, and that can be energy. It's an energy transition. Sometimes it can be draining, but you have to set aside that time. But what I recognize is that coaching clients over time as they start doing this, as I start working with them and emphasizing that they set aside time, they start getting the mindset. And I've heard this over and over again is the business needs me. The business needs me to be paying attention to it and be doing things to help it grow uh, and improve. And, and I, I go even so far as your employees, your team members need you as well. They don't need you treating patients. The business honestly, doesn't need you treating patients. The business and your team members need you to be a leader and set aside time to grow and improve the business, right? And so what I see over and over again is as my coaching clients start spending and setting aside more time for the business, they recognize that they're actually doing their patients a disservice because they're spending so much time during treating, thinking about what they need to be doing on the business side. And so <clears throat> it's really, a, like I said, a disservice to the patients that you're not totally engaged because you have so much of the business stuff going on in the back of your head. You're listening to conversations up at the front desk that are going on between the front desk and someone that's trying to schedule or has questions about the insurance. And you're just thinking, oh, I wish that would go better. Or a conversation on the phone that there, someone's having, you're like, oh, I wish they didn't say it that way or um, someone has some complaints about a copay, you know, like, oh, I wish that could be handled better. Or even uh, another provider saying, ah, I don't, you know, come in one, two, three times a week. I don't care, whatever works for your schedule. And you're like, if that therapist shouldn't be talking that way. I mean, those are the kind of things that we really need to do as leaders to appropriately help our business and help our team members, right? Um, I, you know, Graham's on the line. He, Graham, can I use you really quick for an example? I know you've transitioned, of course, you've been an owner for well over a decade and you're recently going through that, this transition well. Have, did you experience some of these same things I'm talking about? All of them. Yeah. Every single one of them. And where, and what do you feel now? What are you feeling now as you're spending more time on the business and not treating as much? What is, what is your feeling about ownership? Um, I think the biggest change is, and I, I don't know who was talking about it the other day about that concept of tolerance. We get used to tolerating a certain level of 
stuff that you start, I don't know, just assuming is something that's going to happen as opposed to going through all those little things that you tolerate and now writing process for them so that it's uniform across the board. And that has gone really well so far. Yeah, because, and knowing you, Graham, you've been spending more time on the business. And is it, is it I don't want to put words in your mouth, but is it too much to say that you feel like you're in more control of your business now that you are actually setting it aside the time for it? Yeah, without a doubt. Yeah, exactly. And I noticed the same thing. I initially, initially, I didn't know what to do with that business time. <laughs> um, and so I did, you know, just default to catching up on notes and, and paying bills and whatnot. But over time, and thanks for sharing, Graham. Um, but over time, I started doing more for the business and, and really being um, intentional about that time that I have. Well, and that, so, and that time frame, you, you talked about the transition from being a provider to doing owner tasks, I end up having to put low grade provider stuff in between it just to wind down. Yeah. Doing things like paying bills in between, mm -hmm. take half an hour, pay bills in between just to wind down into I'm doing something else. Otherwise you sort of run around like a chicken. Yeah. It's important to take that time. If you, if you haven't set aside, and this is kind of a time management thing and I, we might discuss it a little bit later, but, um, if you um, if you're looking at your day the night before or the morning of, that will help you a lot to really structure and be efficient with your admin time. Because, like you said, uh, it's tough to leave the provider room and being a provider, and then immediately know what I need to start doing as an owner. Well, no, uh, you know when you. When you're in your proper mindset the night before or the morning of before you start treating patients, it's important to list those things that are of highest priority. So you're getting the most important things done and also the, and what to do things need to get done either in terms of urgency or of major importance. Because once, once you make that transition, like you said, Graham, the head can be so scrambled. It's, um, it's hard to then sit down and prioritize your afternoon or your admin time, whenever that is. So right. make sure you have a clean head when, when, and, and that you actually give yourself to do items, calendar your to do items, if necessary, prioritize appropriately, block out time for projects accordingly so that you're not, you're not going into it scrambled and confused. Right. Yeah. Thanks for sharing Graham. I, I know you've gone through this just recently, so I appreciate your, your uh, experience. No problem. My, my pleasure. You know, uh, I want to just to add another foundational piece to the conversation today. There is the three hats postulate. And this was remind, I, I was reminded by Eric Miller of Econologics at the last HOD symposium in 2019 about the three hats postulate. And that is, as owners, we all wear three hats. There's the owner hat, the administrator hat, and the provider slash technician hat. Now, recognize, first off, you never lose the owner hat. I mean, once you own the business, you own the business. It's, it's the ball and chain. It's on you forever, right? However, as small business owners, and especially as we get started early, and this isn't specific to physical therapy. This is small, all small business ownership. We are wearing all three. Wearing all three hats creates chaos and eventually poor performance the successful owners and our jobs is to eventually only wear two of those hats and eventually only get down to one hat. Now, when I say that successful only owners only wear two hats, well, remember they, they never lose the owner hat. So they need to choose if they're going to be successful to be administrators or providers. They can't be all three for the long term and be successful and meet their goals. Right. And the, the idea is to eventually, take away the technician slash provider hat and the administrator hat so that you as the leader and the captain of the ship are only wearing the owner hat. And that's your job is to work yourself into one to two hats max, depending on your situation, right? So based on that postulate, your job as an owner and the successful owners that increase production over time, like this is the secret, right? Is to make sure we're setting aside time to properly wear the owner hat and eventually start shedding the provider administrator hats. 
So making the most of our admin time, like, like I said, I, when I had that admin time, I had four or five hours. I'm like, I, I don't really know what to do. One of those was obvious to me. And we talked about it last coffee with Nathan. That was review stats. Uh, you got to review stats. There are some daily, there are weekly, there are monthly stats in different departments. Um, make sure you, you can get overwhelmed with stats. I'd, I'd, add, I'd re recommend you either reach out to me or a coach or consultant to focus on some of the most important stats if they are overwhelming. But the number one thing is to get the data, review your stats, right? The second is to get the business training that I was talking about earlier. This is a great opportunity, time to meet and strategize with your coach or sit in with your mastermind group if you have one, do some consulting webinar or to get some consulting or take a webinar, you name it. That, this is the time to do those things, right? Get in the owner mindset. <clears throat> and then meetings. Yeah, I think it's Vern Harnish in Mastering the Rockefeller Habits said, you know, the the speed of progress in your business is the rhythm. Oh, how is it? The speed of progress in your business is, is related to the speed at which you have meetings and not to say that there should be lots of meetings. You can definitely get into meeting overwhelm, but again, I, I'll go back to our team members want to hear from us. They want to know what's in our brains and, and that we train them and give them what the tools that they need and the support that they need to be successful. Our job is to create a foundation for them to be successful, right? So that means that we're, we need to have meetings. Now there's the regular, whether it's weekly, bi-weekly, monthly, all team meetings, uh, where you're going to talk about some of the st statistics of the business, how well it's doing, some of the concerns and issues that are coming up, the calendar items. You know, we have these vacations and, and these providers going out. You know, all that stuff should be covered. Make sure you're highlighting values during that time and people that have been really successful at exemplifying those values. It's a great um, culture creator if you take advantage of that time with those all team meetings. But there are other meetings. You know, there are key people in your organization that are, that are if they're not now, they'll eventually be your leadership team and be taking things off of your plate. This is where they're going to eventually take on those administrator hat, that administrator hat across a group of them off of you so that you can be the owner. So it's important that you have leadership meetings, even if it's a single individual at this time uh, and eventually might graduate to more. Usually there's someone that's covering the front desk. Maybe there's a clinic director involved. So then it's three people, but a leadership team is going to strategize and say, okay, you know, get, get delve a little deeper. We've got some bigger issues underlying our clinic. That's where you start talking to your leadership team and even sharing a little bit more of how things should be done or how you want them to be done. This is an opportune time to also have one-on-one -on -one meetings. Um, if you're like any owner, you're probably behind on your annual assessments. <laughs> so it's a good time to do one-on-ones during this time. Uh, not only annual assessments, but man, People need to be held accountable on a regular basis. I don't care who you are. Your team needs to, um, team members need to be addressed on a regular basis. And the worst thing you can do is let somebody go without having held them accountable at some point during their uh, employment under you. And that's where you can have these uh, meetings with them to hold them accountable. So. Occasionally, you're going to meet specifically with providers. Maybe sometimes you meet specifically with the front desk and cover some of those items. Maybe those aren't so routine. Uh, but lastly, one of those meetings is going to be with your bill or collector. It's got to be a monthly meeting there for the billing collecting people. You cannot let your money slide and just think everything's okay. You need to have billing collecting meetings with them at a minimum monthly. And that's where they provide you the reports and you, you ask questions appropriately of your money, which is the lifeblood and very important, I would think, to most people. Uh, if you have any questions about what that billing collections meeting would look like and how to appropriately hold your biller slash collector accountable, listen to a podcast that I did with Will Humphreys recently. He and I talked about what a successful billing company, <laughs> billing meeting looks like and the statistics that you as the owner should know in order to have a successful meeting and a successful biller. 
that's one of the downfalls of us as physical therapists. We don't know how to hold a biller accountable. We don't know how to grade if they're doing well. We simply kind of go off what our bank account balance looks like. And if it's going up, then the biller's doing okay. And if it's going down, maybe the biller's an issue. I don't know. <laughs> and that's a poor way to assess your biller. So make sure, number one, you have the mindset that you're collecting everything you're making. And if you're not, listen to the podcast with Will or please reach out to Will. I'm sure he'll be happy to talk to you about how to hold your biller slash collector accountable and where things might be falling through the cracks. But that, that's a monthly meeting, right? Um, other things you can do in your, with your half days, uh, review policy and procedures. Graham mentioned it already, you know, things that you're tolerating some things, well, maybe because there's not a policy and procedure in place that needs to be written down or videotaped and shared with the team. Um, this is also a great time, your admin time to look ahead, strategize, plan, set goals, and maximize, by, maximize this time by prioritizing. This is what I was talking about earlier. Uh, set up your day ahead of time Set up your admin time ahead of time with things that are of highest priority to do items that are, that are urgent, need to be done soon. Um, but make sure you're focusing on those things that are the most important. And you can ask yourself this question. What is the one thing I can do today or even in the moment such that by doing it, everything else becomes easier or unnecessary? What's the one thing I can do today such that by doing it, everything else becomes easier or unnecessary. And that can guide you if you're questioning, what do I need to do during this time? Let that first th thing that comes to your mind be the thing that you work on, right? And I, and I take that from the book called The One Thing by, I think his name is Gary Williams. I can't remember his first name, but it's Williams of Keller Williams Real Estate. But he shared that and it's been a pivotal pivotal question for me over the years. I ask that of myself all the time. All right. So during the admin time, we're going to focus on the results. What, what are some of, well, let's say this. What are some of the results of setting aside admin time? Well, one of those is statistics improve as you're measuring them. The quote by Carl Pearson, and this is called um, Pearson's law. When performance is measured, performance improves. When performance is measured and reported back, the rate of improvement accelerates. So initially, as you're spending time looking at statistics, you're, I promise you, you're, as you start assessing them and tracking them and doing little actions to improve them, they will improve. Over time, your job to shed that administrator hat and be the owner is to get the team to measure their own performances and report them up to you. And when you do so and hold them appropriately accountable and share with them uh, successful actions that can improve those uh, statistics and train them accordingly, the rate of improvement, like Carl Pearson says, accelerates, right? So st statistics will improve if you're spending time looking at them, working on them. Uh, meetings gives you a great opportunity to address common obstacles with teams, resolve, things together uh, and that in, in improves production company wide. It, it was Graham and not to, not to pick on Graham too much today, but uh, I remember in one of our coaching calls, the team member said, how did we ever get along without these? Right. And if I remember that was a, a, a team member who had been with you almost like eight to 10 years and, and, and you started having regular meetings with them. And, and she's like, what did we do before these meetings to get along? Well, that's what you did. You just got along. I mean, you just did what you had to do during the day. It was almost like survival, doggy paddling, trying to just keep your head above water. Well, there's more to ownership than just keeping your head above water. It's much more fun to, you know, be in control of the ship, right? Um, policy, PMP, policy and procedures, it, it results in efficiency of operations. Then your team members can be confident that they're doing, the th doing things right. I mean, you know, many our team members want to know when they're doing a good job. Our team members want to know that, you know, I follow, this is the, oh, this is how you want it. His step one, I make this call. Step two, I call them. Step three, I collect the money. Step four, I schedule a patient in for their full plan of care. They want to know that that's 
that that's their job and that they're doing it well. And then they can go back to a procedure and say, okay, I, I did all those steps. Or if something went awry, oh, I missed that step. I need to remember to do that. So policy and procedures can be huge. That can, huge, that can be written. That could be video, um, whatever works for you. So one of the other results is we get to strategize and achieve some goals, right? And set some goals in the first place. <laughs> you know, I had a coaching call yesterday and the guy said, you know, how do I know when it's a, when, when I should open another clinic or get a larger space, or I'm just looking down the road, right? I said, well, it depends, it depends on what your goals are. I mean, do you have any goals for growth? He's like, no, well, you know, not really. Things are just going okay. Well, think about five years down the road. Where do you want to be in five years? What's your ideal scene? And then work backwards. I mean, you're the, you're the captain of the ship. You need to look up on the horizon and see what's coming. And immediately what's coming is some Medicare reimbursement changes, some PTA reimbursement changes. You need to know and strategize what to do about that. But you also need to have some goals that are beyond that. And that would include growth. I can't tell you if and when you should grow. Uh, that's up to you and what you want to do personally for your family, professionally. I mean, you got to take all those things into account, right? So Brian Tracy said, the goal without a plan is only a dream, right? So we set our goals and then we make plans accordingly to hit certain targets with certain deadlines that are achievable and work towards those goals, right? And then as the owner, one of the best results is man, you have less time treating and more time focusing on your business, which means greater freedom for you and your personal life and your family and friends. And honestly, you get more profits. As you start working on your business, your statistics increase, you focus on money with your billing collector and your revenues and your profits increase accordingly. So those are some of the great results that you get with uh, setting, setting aside admin time. That's my presentation. I, you know, I, I would love to hear from other people some of the effects. I mean, how much time are you taking now? And what have some, been some of the benefits to setting aside admin time, number one? Number two, what are some of your focuses um, that have been successful actions of yours by taking admin time? Anyone want to share? I'm going to pick on you, Scott. Scott, I just popped up. Well, you popped up, but you also mentioned in the chat in the chat that you agreed with some of the things that I was saying. <laughs> yeah, and I forgot what that was. I looked at that. I'm like, I forgot what I, I it struck a chord. Something you said. Um, yeah. So you want to know how the uh, focusing admin time has helped? Is that the kind of the gist? Yeah, what has been the effect of you focusing uh, or setting aside the admin time? What has been what have been some of the benefits? And also, what are what are some of the things you're focusing on in your admin time? So two part question. Yeah, so the benefit has been um, that, well, I, I've taken myself pretty much out of treatment, nice. almost 100%. That's great. That's great. Um, and just really focusing on the diagnostics portion of it. So I just passed my stage two midterm, so I can start doing EMGs and I got like four set up already for next week. So that's cool. Yeah, that's cool. Um, and you know, I've been doing ultrasounds for a little bit. So like kind of focusing it, it's kind of like R and D right now. Like the ultrasound EMG is taking up a lot of my time as far as one, I'm a little slow with it. Um, cause I'm not, you know, I'm new to it. So sure. it's taking me more time in the clinic and number two, just the study time, um, is, has been a lot. So yeah. had I not taken myself out of the clinic, I don't know how I would have yeah. done that. Yeah. Um, so, so that, so, so that's allowed me to do that and to expand, expand the business. Um, and as far as, I mean, I've been more honed in on the metrics. And so my front desk, uh, position has really cleaned up, um, yeah. tracking co-pays or miss co-pays patients who don't have appointments and just yeah. having a once a week meeting with her, with all the metrics there, she actually compiles the metrics. Um, and you know, and she's like, yeah, this is great. I'm, it's like, I, I, it's great to know now I can run these reports and now I know what more I have to do type yeah. of thing. She's appreciative of it. Um, 
so that's helped. Um, now on the clinical end, I feel like I've been so immersed in studying for this exam that I had like, you know, I've, I've kind of like dropped the ball a little bit on oversight at the clinical end. I mean, I have some oversight, but it's not to the level I need. And I feel like I need that. I put on the schedule once a week meeting with my head PT, but it's been tough to keep. And then I, I had like a staff meeting once a week, but then this neurologist wants to play tennis with me at that time. So I'm like, all right. So I've rescheduled that for Thursday next week. We missed a couple. Um, so, you know, yeah, that's, I don't know. That's kind of where I'm at. I, I, I see where I need to kind of hone in a little bit more, mm -hmm. but um, you know, as far as like the admin time, uh, you know, I've been, I've been pretty good at like projects, right? So today it's like, was my day to do my, I met with my accountant last week and I had yeah. to do some stuff for her and it wasn't just like paying bills. It was like deep dive into the books. Yep. It's the first time I've done it all year yep. and, you know, picked up on some things and blah, blah, blah. Nice. So, um, and then just marketing, I'm going with a new marketing company, um, had to clean up that a little bit. I'm going to have to, you know, I constant contact. Now I had some time to put some into the constant contact. Um, so now, you know, the things that are going to like pay dividends. So I don't know, I have my punch list. I can make up like a monthly punch list of things to do, like the R and D mm -hmm. stuff, like that's going to take time and then more the management and mm -hmm. it's helped. It's great. You know? Yeah. We're up forty percent year over year, and I've taken myself out of the clinic. And Congrats, dude. it's like you know, it's a little hit to the ego because it's like they don't need me. <laughs> I'm not all that. They'll come and see, you know, anybody else in my clinic. And That's right. They're complimenting other people. Yeah. They're not asking for me. So, yeah. well, yeah, I didn't. And thanks for sharing, Scott. I didn't list everything that you could be doing, but yeah, you should be meeting with your CPA slash bookkeeper. On a, rate, on a monthly basis and going over numbers. Um, talking about HODs, yeah, you should be strategizing for diagnostics. I mean, <clears throat> you need to set aside time to make sure that your investment in HODs is being successful, number one. <clears throat> how, is it, how is it getting implemented, right? And so you need to spend the time on the diagnostic statistics. What trainings are you gonna be doing next? Who is doing what and how far along are they looking ahead for the next, how many more tests do I need to do between now and the testing or application date in order to make this next testing cycle? Um, there's plenty of HOD stuff that needs to be done. I mean, we're talking about admin time here, but I mean, HODs itself, you do also need to set aside on top of the admin time, some study time. And you're a student all over again, you paid the tuition, it's time to study for um, for your diagnostic stuff. So if you're going to, if you're going to make that a successful investment, you have to spend the time <laughs> to make sure it's implemented well. And then lastly, marketing, of course, I mean, as owners, we either need to be creating or reviewing content, uh, marketing content on a regular basis. And, um, and that could include not just our business, but also the HOD stuff so that they, um, so that we're marketing the appropriate stuff for HODs and promoting it accordingly as well. Again, to make that successful. So I didn't list everything that could be done. You just knocked out three things that I didn't list that owners need to do. And when you start adding that stuff, stuff up, you just think, wow, it's uh, really hard to treat full time and do all the stuff that your business needs. <laughs> it's crazy. Christina noted in the chat that it's also important to give directors of each clinic dedicated time and reduce their treating time, depending on how big the site is. And I agree with that. I mean, we, correct me if I'm wrong, Will, but we, our clinic directors would treat maybe 34, 35, 36 hours a week um, on the schedule, but we're given at least a half day themselves to do the stuff that we're talking about. They, they needed to be tracking stats they needed to be holding team members accountable. They needed to be having one-on-one um, -on -one meetings or team meetings, either or meetings specifically with providers or with the front desk specific to their clinic sites. So clinic directors, I agree, Christina, were also, um, uh, are also need that admin time, not just us as owners, but clinic directors need that as well. Hey, Nate, you know, Sean Miller at Connect had a really cool I wish I had remembered it exactly, but he would give the directors 
of his clinics, and that's what he ended up doing at Empower, is that the amount of admin time was proportionate to the number of FTEs that they supervised. Okay. And it's a pretty cool little formula, you know? So like, obviously you don't want to give 10 hours of admin time if, they, if the PT director has one FTE employee, but if they're a clinic that has 10 PT FTEs, then obviously you might want to look at something like that, depending on how many people they're supervising. But I yeah. thought that was cool. We never, we never did that. It was something I discovered afterwards. And can yes. someone share with me a um, clinic, dir um, clinic director job description? Because I, I don't really, I mean, I, I want that to happen, but I don't really have a clue of what they should do. Because I've been just doing everything for so long, including yeah. like minor plumbing and, and electrician work in the <laughs> clinic. Um, <laughs> come on, you guys know, right? Like, I, I don't have access to that anymore, but if, um, if someone does, please share. I, if you were going to start from scratch, I would simply say, write down all the stuff that you're doing that would be specific to clinic director stuff you would expect from them, minus the electrician work and the plumbing work, and, uh, and um, write that down. And that's the beginning of your job description. You know, off the top of my head, it's compiling stats. It's ensuring that everyone is productive and meeting a minimum expectation. Um, they're meeting with you. They're meeting with team members on a regular basis. So it includes meetings. They might be, depending on what you expect out of them, there could be a minimum expectation for treatment or, or provide production. Um, there could be a minimum expectation for marketing content if they are responsible for maintaining some relationships locally. Um, they might also be responsible for um, get even down to um, company parties or, or clinic parties, or uh, they might organize that, not necessarily do everything, but organize the clinic team members to do parties or community events or uh, charities, or what are we going to do for the holidays, guys? You know, what do we want to do? October is National Physical Therapy Month. What are they doing in their clinics to celebrate National Physical Therapy, Therapy Month? Our clinic directors were responsible for having dress up days and raffles and stuff like that. So uh, yeah, clinic directors could be doing a number of things. Uh, you, off the top of your head, I'm pretty sure Scott, you could probably come up with at least 10 to 15 items that you yeah, would- Yeah, but I'm just trying to figure out like what, what's my role as an owner and then what do I give to them? How much time do I give to them? What's yeah. their productivity levels that, you know? Yeah. I gotcha. I, you know, we, we still expected our clinic directors to produce and they should be, the clinic director should be one of the best producers on your team um, in terms of treating patients and, and what they're doing with treatment on that side of things. From an owner perspective, you know, it's a, it's a gradual pr process. You don't make that transition and give them the clinic director tag right off the bat. They're a clinic director essentially in training for however long it takes for them to take over those responsibilities and do them successfully before they get that title. Right. And so, yeah. so the problem though is like, like I have a PTA who's been with me for 15 years and she's great. And she's the most, she's the best producer. Right. But it's like, I would love to make her clinic director and she could handle all this stuff, but she's the best producer. Oh. Like she crushes it. You know, it's like, so why would I want to take her out of that position? Then my PT is pro the, she's kind of a new hire. She's probably my worst producer. And I don't, I mean, I, I'm hesitant to bring her on as clinic director just because of that. She's not really, we have to have a conversation about core values. Um, yeah. So, you know, but it, like to take your best producer out, you know, she sells the laser. She just, just uh, you know, meets her bonus every month. But then to take her out, it's like, eh, you know, I don't want to do that. <laughs> yeah. And totally understood. If, if you want to get offline and talk with me or Jim or Will, yep. uh, not to volunteer you guys, but I'm sure you guys oh, would be open to talking about some of that stuff, I'm sure. Of course, of course. Of course. Yeah, but, um, but from my perspective, one of the best clinic directors we had was a PTA that was with me a long time, and she was a great producer as well. And um, remember, you're, you're, you're not sacrificing you know, all of her treatment time we're talking like four to five hours a week. And what she does is takes things off of you and also gets the rest of the team to produce. So um, in one way, it's not quantifiable. 
the the translation between taking her off the team and what she's taking off of you like uh, it's hard to put a, a dollar amount to what she's taking off of you um, especially if you know that she's going to do it well because she's good um, so there's a benefit in that regard that isn't totally monetary off the off the top but she could also because of her example and because she's she's it's going to be hard for her to accept providers saying well i can't do that and she says well i have the same amount of time as you do and i'm provi i'm producing just as much so please help me understand so she can come from that perspective and help them train her and she can actually say well this is what i do in order to be productive and you want that type of person to be training the other people and that there, there's a big difference between it coming from you to the team and the providers and it coming from a peer and training and teaching the providers um, coming from you uh, there's a difference right and when when it's peer-to-peer -peer, they understand okay it's this isn't just the boss talking down to me this is someone who's at my level providing that support christy i saw you got a question is there a limitation on ptas overseeing pts yeah, I didn't know if that was a state by state thing. I know our clinical manager was kind of concerned about that. If, um, if a PTA can oversee other PTs. Well, like if they I, were like a clinical manager or something. Sure. I've never seen anything in a practice act that limits a PTA from being a supervisor. It's a different story if they're supervising production and signing off on, on treatment. They, you know, of course, they can't do that. But by all means, they can be, they can own it. You know, I have a friend down the street, he's a PTA, he owns the clinic, right? So there's nothing keeping PTAs from doing that. They can be, they can have that leadership, they can have that authority. Signing off on notes is a, is a different type of supervision that they're not able to do. Yeah, let me I, I add one thing, to Nathan. Um, Christy, you know, I am, um, yeah, like Nathan said, I have plenty of colleagues, friends that have PTAs because they are the strongest, you know, they are like, it's got to, I think, the butt kickers or whatever, the producers, mm -hmm. and they are good managers. You know, they manage well, they handle administrative duties, they can oversee a group, they can handle flows. Anyone, can, I, I know some clinics, some big guys that have a completely unclinical person running PTs. And that's, that's also a great idea in some ways because they're removed from the minutia of why we treat certain ways and just like, well, I get it, but you still got to get your numbers. You know, I mean, depends on how you want to build it, of course. There's pros and cons on all of those. But, um, but yeah, no, I, I don't know why administratively that you couldn't have anybody run any PT. But yeah, I agree with Nathan. Okay, that's great. I made that was like a, just a fixed idea she had or just had heard it. So that, that's really good to hear. Yeah. If, if I'm not mistaken, uh, one of our friends, Vinod, in New York, his right-hand guy started off at the front desk and he moved his way up in supervision over all the production and everything. So zero healthcare experience, he moved his way up and, and he runs a very large organization for him. Great, thank you. Oh, sure, I hope it helps. Any other questions? Graham, number one, thanks for sharing your insight today. I appreciate it, that was huge. Um, knowing you've gone through this recently. Scott, thanks for your question as well uh, and your support. Um, Angie, thanks for sharing on the chat. And so did you, Christina. Um, uh, so as I mentioned before, <clears throat> my, my change in abilities as an owner, I can directly tie to the time that I took away from treating to focusing on owning my business and setting aside that administrative time to working on that. There's a direct correlation between my abilities and capacities as an owner and um, between when I started that and afterwards. So I highly recommend it. If you have any questions for me about what to do with your admin time or any things that, that we brought up today, feel free to reach out to me. You can email me, Nathan at ptoclub.com my number 480-695-3343. And I'll be happy to talk with you a little bit more about it. I'm always excited to talk about business. I've recently had um, Angie on a podcast interview talking about her success with social media. 
already. It's been one of my um, most listened to episodes so far this year on the podcast. So that's a really popular one. I've done a number with Will. I did one re- uh, a few months ago with Christina and her success with um, uh, social media as well. So check out the Physical Therapy Owners Club podcast because there's some great information on there as well. And if I'm not mistaken, next week is the lovely Christina Panetta. Yes, sir. Okay. Yeah. I, I wasn't sure. It was either the lovely Christina Panetta or the lovely Will Humphreys. <laughs> and I wasn't sure which one. <laughs> so next I go week, by Diane, please. Oh, you're not, lovely. Yes, exactly. Okay, next week is Coffee with Christina. There's a beautiful mug. Da, 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 pun intended. And uh, otherwise, we'll see you guys next week.